Welcome to my sewing room. Oh, we have such a wonderful show for you today. It's all about making wonderful gifts for a brand new baby. I can't think of a sweeter time to sew. Now, the first thing we're going to do on the show today is going to be to show you this wonderful little baby bonnet. We have two versions, one with the lace coming down in the back, and then we have another version that has the lace that kind of goes up and has a little bow in the back and with a little bit of silk ribbon embroidery. The next adorable project we have for you today are the two little pair of baby booties. There's a little pink pair, a little white pair with pink trim for a little girl and a little white pair with blue trim for a little boy. Those would be such a wonderful present for a new baby. Also nice to wear for a christening or a very special occasion. Now we have a really nice gift also. This is so much fun. It's a baby necessary supply list. You open it up, this wonderful little uh, carton, and you have the baby lotion and the baby powder and a comb and a brush. It is so pretty, and there's even a baby duck in the middle. I think that's kind of cute too. I thought it maybe squeaked, but it didn't. Anyway, let me go ahead and show you that you just pull the little strings, close it up, and this makes just a wonderful little accessory to put out in baby's room. Speaking of a decorative accessory, I absolutely love this Silk Dupioni plaid pillow. It's a decorative pillow to go in a nursery. We have also made a really beautiful um, lace hanky to go in the middle with silk ribbon embroidery and with uh, lace trim and, and machine embroidery is what I meant to say instead of silk ribbon. But actually this would be a wonderful, wonderful decorative pillow to use in the nursery. Now then, if you'll come over to the technique boards with me, we'll get started on these wonderful, wonderful baby gifts. A lot of times you have asked me, Martha, I really would like to have some really inexpensive projects. So this one is not only beautiful and elegant, it's also very inexpensive. We started out with purchased hankies for these little bonnets and they cost $1.98 at a very popular large catalog store. Isn't this a sweet little bonnet? It has the silk ribbon embroidery by hand and the little silk ribbon to tie under the chin. And then this little bonnet has a casing in the back. The little handkerchief, the purchased handkerchief was folded up and a casing run in and then the little ribbon was tied. Okay, I also have a really special surprise for our viewers of Martha's Sewing Room. We have an original poem about the little baby bonnet that later is to be carried on a wedding day that has never, for, never before been um, read anywhere, we don't think. This is by Margaret Knox from Georgia. I was a little hanky a day or two ago until somebody picked me up and then began to sew. They stitched and stitched so carefully until I was instead a dainty baby bonnet for a pretty baby's head. But do not dare to lose me, tuck me carefully away, for that something old she carries on her blessed wedding day by Margaret Knox. Now, here is the little inexpensive $1.98 handkerchief purchased at a popular catalog retail mail order store in the accessories department. For this first version of the little blank, little uh, uh, bonnet, it was folded over once and then just folded back a little tuck. A straight stitch is then run, two straight stitches actually, one on one side to hold it and the other, and then the ribbon is run through for a casing. Now let's look over here on this edge. Remember there was a little bit of silk ribbon embroidery and kind of pinch the edge down just a little bit and stitch it. A little bit of silk ribbon embroidery and you have a lovely $1.98 baby gift with also an original poem. Now let me give you the second version of the baby bonnet. This little version is kind of just folded into a pleat in the back and once again the front has just been folded over. Now this one is very easy to make also. First of all, I'm going to fold over the points to make a little tuck. First, excuse me. First of all, I fold back the, uh, the little front piece. Then I fold each end to make a little point. Then this is a little line that's a fold line and a fold line, and this is the center. In other words, I'm going to fold it on the fold line, move it over, match this point to the center, just making a little tuck. Then I'm going to fold this one on the fold line bring it over to the center, 
making a little tuck and actually that makes just a little pleat and you see when you put it on the baby's head that's just a little pleat and then a little bit of silk ribbon was done right there. Now then the other baby gifts are so very sweet and easy also. Let's just see how to make them. I absolutely adore baby booties. As a matter of fact, I have lovingly always said, I almost think it's child abuse for a, a, a day old infant to be taken home from the hospital in blue jeans and uh, tennis shoes. I think babies ought to wear wonderful little booties and these are so inexpensive and so much fun to make. This is the little girl version of the booty with a little silk ribbon embroidery. By the way, this is just a bridal satin. Look at that little sweet uh, ankle strap. Isn't that precious? Almost like little ballerina shoes. A little silk ribbon embroidery, and then this really sweet little treatment to put the silk ribbon around the edge. The little boy's version also has a little silk ribbon embroidery. We're not gonna leave the little boys out, but this, uh, this time the little rose is over here on the side, and the little boy's shoe ties across the instep of the shoe rather than being around the ankle strap like a little ballerina shoe. Now these are not difficult to make. Just take a little bit of pinching and pulling. All right, here is the main body of the shoe. The first line of stitching goes here, around, and around. And by the way, it is lined with just a little white flannel and the bridal satin. Then of course you turn this right side out. Now the second step, after I have turned this right side out, is to bring the pieces together and sew up the back seam. In other words, sew the lining and then sew the satin. Now then, this shoe is almost finished. You see what's happening here? It's beginning to look like a little shoe, isn't it? Now I get the sole of the shoe, which has the little uh, flannel lining and then the little satin sole of the shoe. And I bring the shoe. Now these are four pieces to four pieces. Actually, I, yes, I do want a raw edge there. Then I pin them in. I pin these to each other after stitching around both of them. I didn't mention that, did I? You go ahead and stitch both of those together. And I'm going to pin them together. And then let me show you this fun little trick I'm doing over here. I took the silk ribbon and a little bit of my basting glue, which just washes out and it just kind of eliminates stitching and pinning. And on something like this, it's really nice to do that. After I had surged around the edges, first of all, you surge around the edges and then I glued, literally glued down with a wash away glue, the silk ribbon on both the back and the top, just kind of glued it down. Now that I have a really pretty blanket stitch that I'm stitching in pink here so you can see it. Let me pull this out of your way. And it goes along. It's just a really pretty overcasting or blanket stitch. You could use all kinds of stitches. And I'm going to come around the booty. And the reason I glued it rather than trying to pin it, I just thought it'd be a lot easier to hang on to this little bitty space. Now remember, first of all, I surged up this booty. Okay, Martha, you're turning those corners pretty well. You see what I've done, though. I've put a little, let me just take this out so you can see it. See, that's a little blanket stitch that decorates the bottom. Now, the reason that was so easy to do, let me just show you. I didn't have to turn anything right side out. I just put all these raw edges together, pinned them, and then surged around there, or just zigzagged around there. And then my finishing stitch is this really sweet little touch, which I think is wonderful. And I especially like the fact that I was able to glue it down so I didn't have to have any pins. Isn't that sweet? Well, okay, here we go. Now we have one more project for you, which is really sweet. You remember the little carry-all, which I'll show you in just a second, that we put the baby powder and the little comb and brush and little bath cloth and, all the, and the little ducky in the middle? Well, that's really easy to make also. First of all, you're gonna to have to have two circles. This first circle is a plaid. And let me let you see where I have stitched down my piping right along the edge. Then I bring the next circle on top and I'm going to stitch all the way around. And now, of course, anytime you put things wrong side or right sides together, I'm going to have to do a little turning here to finish this up. So I'm going to turn this right side out. I didn't have to leave much of an area to turn because I'm just turning fabric. And I've got a fun trick to show you in a minute where you're going to have to leave a little bit more of a turning area. Okay, right side out. Not exactly perfect, but you get the point. Now that is the bottom of this cute little bag. Now I guess you're wondering what I'm doing with the top of a can of a big old butter tub, margarine tub maybe. Well, can you see the line I've drawn here? 
I drew a circle inside of it. I just need a piece of plastic and why throw it away when we can recycle? So I draw the line around here and then cut it out. Now let me show you where it's going to go. I've already taken my glue and glued it down. I'm going to put it on the middle of the inside piece. Now then, I gave it a little bit of glue, that washout type glue. Once again, I've got to put my piping around. I'll go all the way around this circle with my piping, then put the next circle on here and stitch it. Now I told you I'm going to have to leave an area big enough to turn this plastic. Because when I turn it right side out this time, I've got to turn that plastic. So I'm going to have to leave a pretty big area. Now after I finish that area, I'm going to put one on top of the other. See, here's my plaid circle, all finished with that good looking little bitty piping. Here's my uh, blue circle. Now here, is the next, here are the next operations. First of all, stitch around that butter tub circle that I have. That, that gets it stable in there and gives you a nice firm finish on the bottom. Then through all of these layers, that'll be four layers, I'm going to stitch here. I'm going to stitch here, I'm going to stitch here, 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 and here. Now look what happens when I do those stitching. I now have some little pockets that I can put all kinds of goodies in. The other stitching I have to do is to do a casing. So I'm going to stitch a row here and a row here, and then I'll have to stop where I can get the you know, a place where I can get the uh, ribbons through. In this case, I use a beautiful silk cording. And then after I make my casing, I run my silk cords through. I have a little buttonhole here for this side and little buttonholes here for this side where I ran it in. Of course, I use that famous safety pin to run it through. And then I'm going to pull it up. Absolutely precious baby gift. And you talk about something sweet. You know what I've also seen done with this? I've seen a machine monogram done on the back with the baby's name or else the monogram. But like if it were for, for a pulling baby, we would put a P on the bottom if you don't know what the baby's name is going to be or if the baby isn't born yet. And this is a shower gift. So you see, we just pull it up, that cute little case, and you can put anything you want into it. I think that is an adorable gift for a baby. I hope you've enjoyed these very, very easy to do and also very, very inexpensive things we've shown you. And next we have an adorable craft for a baby. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today my daughter, Joanna Pullen Hammett. Joanna is a recent graduate of Texas Christian University majoring fashion promotion and she has recently joined me and my company. Joanna, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Today, I'm going to show you how to make this darling picture frame. This picture frame would look cute in a little girl's room, a little boy's room, a college dormitory, yeah. anything <laughs> you want. So it, let me, it's so easy and it's so much fun to make. Let me show you how you make it. First, you buy a plastic picture frame from a discount store. These are real popular, so you can buy them anywhere. Next, you take a piece of cardboard and you cut it out the same size as your plastic picture frame. You then take that cardboard, cut around the square so it looks like this. Next, you take the fabric of your choice, place the cardboard, square on the fabric and make a square a half an inch away from the cardboard. Then you're going to trim around till the square is cut out. Finally, you're going to take your glue, dab your glue all around the material or the cardboard and fold it over like so. Once you glue and fold, it will look like that on the back and this on the front. You will then slide it into the picture frame and accessorize it with a beautiful bow or anything else that you want to accessorize it with. It might even look good with, with buttons or uh -huh. any jewelry, anything you'd like to accessorize your picture frame with. And the end product will look like this. You know what, a little hot glue gun. I've seen some that were like for soccer or right. for ballet or for birthdays. Those are great birthday gifts. They and don't really cost are. A lot don't of money. cost any, hardly anything. <laughs> Which is 
very good for most people's budget. And now I have a really fun and very, very easy home decorating project for you. This may be the easiest project we've ever had for you on Martha's Sewing Room, and it is so pretty. It's a little poof pillow. Now, all in the world this is, is two layers of silk dupioni. The first one is this wonderful little tiny, tiny miniature pink gingham, and the second one is a beautiful pastel plaid. You can see it's tied with a pretty ribbon, and one of the things that makes it the very most beautiful is there's a handkerchief which has simply been pushed down in the middle and spread out for some decorate, decorative treatment. Now, there we go. How easy is this to make? Oh, I'm talking super simple. I simply have a big circle of fabric of the plaid silk dupioni, and I have the same size circle of the pink gingham silk dupioni. I have placed them right sides together, and I am just going to straight stitch the two of them together. Of course, there's no stabilizer needed when you're working on a fabric that has as much body as this. I'm going to straight stitch them around there, taking the pins out, all the way around. They don't even have to be cut exactly the same size because mine are a hair off here, but that's all right. It's still going to be just perfect. I'm going to make a perfect circle on this one. I'm going to stitch it straight stitching all the way around. Let me see. I don't want to get too close over here. Still got a little way of going. Then as soon as I stitch these two circles together, I'm going to simply turn it right side out. I didn't even put any piping in it because it's not necessary to put piping on something like this. As soon as I stitch these two circles together, then I'm going to turn it right side out. Okay, that's plenty of stitching, I think. All right, I'm going to turn it right side out as I have done here. Now, let me just dismantle this one just a little bit to show you. Now, you can see I've tied the ribbon on there, but what I tied it with before, after I put my polyfill stuffing in there, I just had a piece of elastic hanging around. So I grabbed a piece of elastic, and you can use ribbon or anything you have, pull it around into a, where I've got this little poofy ball there, tie the elastic tight, then take your pretty ribbon, which is what I have right here. The reason you need to tie it first is so it'll hold together. So you can take your time and tie your pretty ribbon and still have it holding together. Also, I can pull it out then on the top, and also it's a good idea to have the elastic because it will poof more easily. Then I have used a really pretty purchased handkerchief. Of course, if you had a special handkerchief, talking about a special way to use that little handkerchief bonnet, you could use the handkerchief you were going to use for the christening or for the baby coming home from the hospital and use that blanket, uh, excuse me, handkerchief. So you just put it right in there, and then you have a very special poof pillow. Now, isn't that an easy way to make a pretty baby gift? And next, we have a wonderful silk ribbon embroidery stitch to share with you. I am so pleased to have as my guest today, Beverly Sheldrick from New Zealand. Beverly is the author of a magnificent book on embroidery entitled Colonial Inspirations. She is also a frequent contributor to both So Beautiful and Fancy Work magazines. Beverly, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. It's wonderful to be here as always. Martha, today we're going to be doing these just these little ladybirds that we have here. There's one here and there's one over here. I don't know whether you know that in our country, ladybirds are considered to be good luck. So of course, how appropriate that we should have ladybirds on this lovely little doll's quilt amongst our flowers. So really very simple to do. Um, you'll see that I have one here. And we start very simply with one straight stitch, another stitch right beside it and again of course it's when you put when you do this ribbon stitch you put the needle into one side to make it curl to give the shape then a big fat French knot at the top here then some little um, dots on his body just to give him that extra look and last but not least we're going to put just these little feelers at the top here because we can't, must have him seeing his way, can't, mustn't we? <laughs> so here we go. Starting first of all with this ribbon stitch, like so. 
pulling it in like that to the side and letting it curl round. Now we'll go to this next one that I've partly done and we're coming up right beside it and once more going in the needle on the other side so that when it comes through we are coming round like that. Then a nice big fat six, seven wraps for this French knot at the top here. And then coming across to this one, we're going to put in these little dots for his body. And we're just going to have two wraps here, so we're going to put one there, one across here, kind of forming like a little V here. So there's the second one. And down again to here, once more a little closer to the middle. And that goes there. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And that goes on up like that. And you can see I've put these extra ones in there. We have our little head here. And we're going to put the little feelers in again. I'm going to put two wraps in, just there, like that, one on one side, and one on the other side. And there is one other little step that I did forget to mention when we were going through it the first time. And that is, we're going to just come up in the middle there, underneath the head, and bring it down through the middle there, like that. And there we have one dear little ladybird. And he's just so sweet, isn't he? Now, Beverly, do you call those ladybirds? Yes, we, we do. We call them ladybugs. Ah, oh, I love it. I thought you said ladybird. That's fascinating. And I didn't know they stood for good luck. Well, in our country, we well, consider them we, good luck. I think we should just say that in our country, they would too. <laughs> Beverly, thank you so very much. And now then, won't you join me in my attic? This little dress was made with so much love. Every stitch of the embroidery was done by hand. Let me bring the little sleeve around and show you first. Isn't that the sweetest little sleeve with the little eyelets with their little stitches coming around, their little handmade stitches coming down to the little cuff on the dress? Then I thought I would just hold this out and let you look from the top to the bottom, the magnificent embroidery on this little dress. All the pretty eyelets and the leaves and the pinwheels and I really like the way this mother or grandmother had done the swirls and here's another swirl and then there's a swirl that comes this way and then the beautiful beautiful uh, four rows of hand hem stitching at the bottom. I bet you might think that the dress would not have a lot of embroidery on the back. Well that's what I thought until I turned it over to look. Look at the massive amount of embroidery that is also on the back of this dress three little buttons, well no, they're not three little buttons, they're four little buttons. And then the beautiful embroidery that comes down and then the embroidery that goes down across the bottom and also the beautiful hand hem stitching and then the little double batiste sleeve. Oh my goodness, how much embroidery did that take? Now the beautiful thing is, you too, if you have one of the computer embroidery machines, or if you want to do it by hand, of course, that's a wonderful way also, but you can really cut the time on doing a magnificent child's dress like this if you have one of the computer embroidery machines. Do you know that you can do the eyelets? You can do every bit of this uh, on the embroidery machines. I thank you so much for visiting, me with, visiting with me in my sewing room today, and I certainly hope you'll join me next time.